The book is subtitled Climate Versus uh, Capitalism. So I wanted to ask you a couple of big questions about that. Capitalism versus the climate. Oh, sorry. Capitalism <laughs> versus the climate. Uh, <laughs> I guess climate didn't do anything to capitalism. So why capitalism and not extractivism, I guess, is what you, what you call it. I mean, I'm using capitalism as the stand-in for our current economic system, which has a name, you know. So I'm talking about real-world capitalism, not, you know, idealized capitalism, right. but, but what we actually have. And I get frustrated when people say, like, the economy, because I feel like they're, they, they're, they're doing that because they don't want to say capitalism. I mean, there's this thing about not saying capitalism. It is this word that people get really worked up about, and I never know whether that's the reason not to use it or a reason to, to use it. And I also think that, that, that capitalism increasingly is a discredited system because, of, uh, because it is seen as, as a system that venerates greed um, mm-hmm. above all else. So I think that there is a benefit to the climate discussion to, take, to name uh, a system that lots of people already have a problem with for other reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's... You know, those those are some of the pros. But I, I mean, I fully, I, I know there are cons because I'm living them, you know, getting lost in the weeds over people who don't read anything but titles. Um, so <laughs> that sort of sucks. I, I read the book. <laughs> Generally, when people hear com- or, uh, capitalism intact, they think, well, the, uh, the alternative is socialism, right? I mean, that's this is sort of the weird constricting spectrum that yeah, we're expected yeah. to be on. So. Yeah, and, and, if, and if you read the book, it's not socialism that you're advocating, really, but sort of more highly regulated capitalism. Do you think that's fair? I, I think we can get lost in the labels, and I, I think at a certain point you regulate the system so much um, or you change it so much that maybe it needs another, another term. Um, and I don't know why it's so important to save capitalism. Um, You know, I mean, it is a pretty battered brand. (laughs) I do think that it is pretty challenging if if you look at the the short-term challenges to growth. Um, And and this is where I think all all these sort of studies coming out about how climate action is compatible with growth are not really wrestling. Yeah, with, with, you you know, with the research that I cite in the book and that you've cited lots from, from, from the Tyndall Center and Kevin Anderson and, Al- and Alice Bose Larkin and uh, what they're saying about if you look at our global carbon budget and you accept there has to be some sense of global equity, then then in the short term we need to be cutting emissions by eight to ten percent a year. Nicholas Stern says three percent reductions is the only thing that's compatible with economic growth. So they're not looking at the short term; they're looking overall. You know, they're mm-hmm. looking at a sort of a half century and going at the end it will be compatible with growth. Um, but that's but in the short term it requires actions that I think are pretty antithetical to what we think of as a free market. I, I think we might be able to come up with an economic system that is ecologically rooted, that is better than anything we've tried before. And this book is not a map of that future. It's mm-hmm. sort of it's opening up some of the sort of the principles that I think should guide that transition that the concept of regenerating life has to be at the center of our economic system of protecting life and that it has to be a, a justice-based tra- transformation. Climate seems like such a huge and unsolvable problem and then you put the sort of spiritual transformation of humanity ahead of it. <laughs> it doesn't seem like you've made it easier to, to solve. I mean, do you really see that underway? Do you see the extractivist mindset uh, on its way out or even seriously embattled or I mean what I see is just focusing on climate is getting us nowhere um, and I don't see any genuine signs of progress on that front um, that that bring us in line with science-based targets um, I think there's something kind of uninspiring about just the narrow focus on mm-hmm. climate I, I understand the argument that yeah okay it's hard enough to tackle climate change and and now you're adding changing the economy on top of that. Um, I think what that misses is that there are a hell of a lot, there are many, many more people who recognize the need to change our economy um, and would put that at the front of their economic agenda. Every time the economy and the climate are pitted against each other, the climate will lose. Mm. But if climate can be our lens to, to catalyze 
this um, economic transformation that so many people need for other even more pressing reasons, mm -hmm. um, then maybe that's a winning combination. And it seems like you're, what you're getting at with the book is an attempt to unify the pushback under some sort of, you know, some sort of banner at least, like something to tile these things together to make them more effective. I mean, is, that, is that fair? I think that the, the banner, in a sense, we already have, like this economic system is failing the vast majority of people. Um, and P.S. it's also destabilizing the climate. People are starting to realize this. Okay, it's th this system that so many people have identified as being what is the reason why people's homes are being foreclosed on, the reason why student debt is soaring, the reason why a lot of people's lives are so much more precarious, the reason why there's so much more inequality, um, is also waging a war on the planet's life support systems. And, and that fact is, I think it should be galvanizing. Like, this book is really not written for climate activists. It's written, like, I mean, if, if my, the reader I have in my head, like, I always have to have a, sort of a reader in my head, and it, it's much more a book for the left. Like, why have you been sitting this out, you know? This is the best right. argument you've ever had. So much of U.S. politics just takes as a given what this sort of status quo is and works around that. And I think the, the, the overarching message that I'm trying to, to, to bring and not kind of getting, you know, it's, it is not a book just about the states, but I think that this is a message that in, in, in some senses is most important in, in the U.S. is we actually have to engage in battles of ideas. Looking back about the, the moments when the left does have these moments of victory, whether it's you know, the New Deal or the wave mm -hmm. of environmental um, regulations that you know, took place in, in the 70s, it's always connected to these big populist shifts, right? Like we start winning when, you know, radical ideas become normalized as they did in the 1930s, as they did in the 1960s, right? That's why I think people should just relax about me using the word capitalism. This actually <laughs> helps liberals. <laughs>